Welcome, mate, on Bloodthirsty Lord, but you can call me Lordy and tell we're back on Paragon once again. I just had like an hour to one hour and a half sleep from the last video, so this is going to be kind of insane to do, and I'm doing this all for you, mates, keeping you guys up to date because something big did drop today, and that is patch version 35, the Monolith update, with all the release notes for that as well, so it's pretty insane. It is information overload, so I'll be breaking this down completely into multiple videos because it's ridiculous to do this all one video because it'll be around 50 minutes plus. There's so many things I want to talk about but within today's video, we're going to be talking about all the general changes that will be coming within this update to Paragon on December 6th. This is one bloody amazing update, one huge update. But before we get into this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button to keep up to date with all the greatest and latest Paragon gaming content and Paragon gaming news. And if you mates haven't turned on notifications yet, you can do so by hitting that bell button next to the subscribe button, and you'll be the first mate to be up to date with the Paragon content. And as always, expected here first. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. So we get an amazing image of the Paragon Monolith update. You got Chimera, Muriel, Murdoch, and Greystone there, chilling in one of the lanes. I'm guessing it's the mid lane with the jungle. It's pretty sick looking. Let's see what the Epic Games team and the Paragon team had to say about this, and we're going to break it down here and there. Welcome to our version 35 release coming on December 6th. It's the biggest update ever to Paragon and we call it the Monolith Update. TLDR, these notes are long, so here's what you really need to know if you don't have the time. Every hero updated, new compact map, faster, more action oriented gameplay, over 100 updates to cards, changes to armor and damage, still on MOBA. If you want more context for the new direction of Paragon, you can do so by watching my other video that I did not long ago about Paragon Monolith update. There was another blog post, and obviously that will be linked in the description below if you want to watch that for yourself. But let's keep going to the general changes from the release notes of version 35. Legacy map has been disabled and replaced with Monolith. We knew that was going to happen, and now we get to see that happen, so that's going to be an incredible experience to actually play Monolith. But obviously, at the same time, I did a tribute video to Legacy because it's obviously going to go away. Very sad time, but Monolith coming, uh, it still evens it out, pretty much. Heroes kills no longer drop CP on the ground. CP is awarded to kills assist directly. That's amazing, so no more collecting loose scraps off the ground for card points or card power. It will just come to you straight away if you do get a kill or assist directly, so that's pretty sick. Buffs are no longer dropped. They now fly towards the last hitter of the buff minion. That is something I really wanted to see. I hated, especially in the first couple of days because I came from other MOBAs and every time you cleared out a buff camp, the orb will just drop and not come straight towards you. And I found that kind of weird in my eyes and now they've fixed that so that's great to see that it just comes straight towards you and you can pretty much start pathing and going towards the next camp straight away with the buff coming directly towards you. Movement penalty added for backpedaling, jumping, strafing or shooting. Oh my god guys. No, I didn't want to see this happen. Okay, so if you're not moving forward, you're going to have a movement speed penalty on you the whole time. So strafing becomes harder, uh, kiting enemies becomes harder. There's so many things, it just becomes hard. And I can't jump anymore. I love to jump because when I play on NA servers, EU, it's the only way that stops the lag. And now I can't do it. Oh my god, guys, so sad. <laughs> Tower range has been decreased from 2,000 units to 1,600 units. Kind of interesting there. Car points are now earned in increments of 1 instead of 3. Okay, this is the new car power system. Instead of getting 3 car powers per level, you'll be getting 1 now with the new car power system. That is super interesting. And hopefully you can gain those car powers quite easily because 1 CP kind of sounds pretty low. But that's the new car power system. We all thought of something if it was a 4 CP start or 1 CP. And it looks like it's going to be 1 CP all around. Rebalanced economy. XP slash CP growth. CP drip. Shared CP split. Kill streaks and death streaks. XP CP bounties for minions and hero kills. So they've rebalanced that and you have to get certain amounts in different categories. But it doesn't say the exact stat. Not yet. Sadly. All structures in the game have their health, armor, and damage rebalanced. So I'm guessing towers are more tough to actually tower dive these days. Because right now it's super easy to tower dive and destroy towers. You can just go a little bit of tankiness and then you just go full crazy damage and you'll be able to get it quite easily. With the actual new towers or the new structures that have their health, armor, and damage rebalance, I'm guessing it's going to be higher to help out the game. And it could even be lower because they want to make faster gameplay. Let's move on to the next section, that is minions. Non-siege lane minions can now be pulled off of towers by attacking them. Siege lane minions will focus towers and ignore heroes. Okay, that's the new feature of the minions. It's kind of interesting. Lane minions are now added to the wave over the course of the match. So pretty much they're going to be adding more minions within a lane over time to make faster gameplay. 
T1 towers now have the bonus armor for the first seven minutes of the match. That's something I feel like it should have been there from the very start from Paragon, because it's used to doing other games as well, other MOBAs. It's pretty much giving full on resistance to the T1 tower, so pretty much you're in lane phase and you can't destroy the tower as quick as possible with five people in one lane. Basic armor is 33% effective against tower damage. So the new type of armor, basic armor, is very effective how it looks of it towards tower damage. So if you want to tower dive, you might want to build basic armor. Backdoor protection visually represents bind shield around the tower when backdoor protection is active. I don't know how this will activate because it's obviously backdooring is something you do when the enemy team is not focusing on you and then out of nowhere you go try to end the game or destroy one of their towers. That's how the backdoor protection should work. But is that how it activates? It just realizes that you're trying to do that and then activates. I don't know man, that's kind of interesting. I want to see what that actually is in game. New jungle buff minion provides a shield which explodes when it times out or when it runs out. Dealing damage in an AoE, attacking a green buff shield target reflects a small amount of damage per hit. New river buff minions, frequently available randomized buffs designed to assist with roaming or laning. Oh my god guys, the river buffs can be any buff. That is something I did not see happening. That is maybe why they didn't really explain it before. Oh my god guys. But it's obviously going to be helping you or is designed to assist you in with roaming and laning. So it could be blue buff which will give you cooldown reduction. And there might be another buff that maybe gives you movement speed because it says roaming. I'm guessing there might be another one. New gold buff minion. Gold buff provides extra CP for last hits during its duration. Raptors added to the jungle. Reinforce over time capped at 3. Oh my god guys, I think someone data mined the raptors before and we've used it as a joke. But look, hey, we've got raptors in the jungle boys. The prime helix has been rebalanced. Let's move on to jump pads. Allows you to quickly transverse from your base, but deactivates when your first T2 tower falls. Oh my god guys. So pretty much have an initial jump pad that's at your base, which you can use to go in the early game majority of the time to get to your jungle, which will most likely will take you to a lane. I'm guessing that's how it works with jump pads. But then if you lose a T2 tower and it falls, your jump pads become useless. Then you have to walk down there with your new move speed to get to that location or that lane or that jungle that you want to be in. Why jungle caps now reinforced instead of increasing level capped at 5. Pretty much what they're talking about there, the higher the cap actually gets in level, the more minions that will be there to help out the camp. I think it's initially 2 minions and then if you reach level 5, you have 7 minions there. I think, 7 minions or 5 minions, it's something very interesting to take into account when you try and clear out the jungle, so it's been very surprising to see that in the game. Spawn platform health regeneration has been rebalanced, houses have been removed, thank god because we got the amber link, amber links have been added to the game, killing jungle minions fills the amber link with card power or card points, which is automatically distributed to the team at set intervals, currently 2 minutes. Enemies can still CP or car power from your amber link by attacking it. Fog walls that obstruct line of sight but do not provide invisibility have been added to the jungle. So pretty much with all the general changes that are coming to Monolith, it's pretty insane looking. You got new camps, you got new buffs, you got the river buffs being explained, you got obviously this backdoor protection system which is obviously something I want to really test out in the game. Uh, Amber Link being added to the game that we already know of. They rebalanced the economy within the game. They changed the structures, how they actually have health, armor, and damage. Basic armor is actually very good for tower diving if you want to neglect 33% of the actual damage from the tower. So heroes like Sevrog and obviously Rampage will benefit quite a bit building basic armor on their character so they're able to take some tower aggro when going through a tower dive with their team to get some successful kills. Movement penalties are the most interesting factor as well because that is something you need to put into a gameplay in order to win. Because if you're trying to kite an enemy, you have to make sure that you're doing it right. Because if you're backpedaling, pretty much walking back, and also shooting an enemy, that's going to make you pretty much super slow, and the enemy player might get close to you and be able to destroy you. So you want to be really careful with that, mates. But mates, if you take all this information that we just said right now, it's been a couple of minutes most likely, but if you put it all together and understand it completely, you'll be very successful on the first couple of days of Monolith, because later on, I'm going to be talking about all the hero changes and so much more. Pretty much, I don't want to give you information overload because that's kind of annoying. I've read it all and it's quite a bit of information to take in. And I didn't want to make a 50 minute video. That's just ridiculous, mates. But mates, tell me your thoughts about all the general changes. What do you like about it? What do you hate? Because I know there's going to be some things you guys hate. I know there's going to be some things I hate. But there's also going to be things that we love to see. And obviously, seeing raptors in the jungle, that's going to be super hype, mates. <laughs>
So leave your opinions and thoughts in the comment section down below. So makes if you did enjoy this video, show your support, smash that button like button. Let's try to get 150 likes on this video. If you make sure to see more Paragon Gaming content and Paragon Gaming news on my channel, all you have to do is share with your friends and hit the subscribe button to become a mate today. That's all for this video. Oh, time's go, but don't you worry. We'll be back very soon. Hang down, boys, because you can't see nothing yet. I am so hyped for version 35 and the Monolith update, but I only had an hour to one hour and a half sleep. The things I do for you, mates. <laughs> and then it feels right.